Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to KNKL 369 Part 2. My name is Ken Lafferty, and I would like to welcome you to, yes, as I said, Part 2, Stylized Armor. We're going to be moving into Bevels, as I said. Let's go ahead and jump back into it. We're working on Ornstein from Dark Souls. And we're getting ready to move into the next phase, and that is teaching you guys about, like, taking a stylized armor and, like, adding additional depth to it, making it feel heavy, making it feel weighty and awesome. But the first thing that I want to do with this is that I want to mess around a little bit more with the dynamics of this pose. And I want it to get it looking a little bit more in the style that I want. A little bit more in the style that I want. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and duplicate that. We're going to erase all this extra stuff on the edge because I really like to show you guys everything. I like to show you guys all of my process. Okay, I, I cheated a little bit. I added a little bit more plating up here and I threw in the plume. Threw in the plume. The plume's there. Um, but I want this feeling, or I want this armor to have an even more exaggerated pose. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start lassoing and moving things around. Lassoing this arm, lassoing this leg. These legs are feeling a little bit small. I want to kind of grow them up a little bit. Grow them up a little bit, kind of move them out. Yeah, yeah, that looks cool. I'm going to grow this leg as well. Enlarge the legs. Yeah, awesome. This hand back here, I feel like this could possibly be in a more interesting position. Maybe something more like this. Uh, yeah, maybe something in that direction. Oh yeah, yeah, there we go. It's like going back in space. I think that looks nice. Yeah, let's have it going back like this. Maybe making a fist. That looks cool. This arm I feel is a little bit stubby. Go ahead and move this out. How's that looking? Ooh, that's looking way cooler. Way, way cooler. This helm, I want this helm to be slightly smaller, I think. Slightly smaller and turned up just a tad bit more. This will be like the eye hole, which will later become the mouth of Ornstein's helmet. So that would be like the nose there, and then we'll have like the eye kind of like this. Yeah, yeah, cool. Digging that. And then because of just my stylistic uh, preferences. I really like World of Warcraft. I love the huge pauldrons in that. I want to make these things big. I want to make these suckers huge. That's looking a lot more interesting. So before we were like this, now we're moving to that. That is way cool. And look at that. I just did all that by lassoing and changing things up, modifying, and now we are ready to get into bevels, ladies and gentlemen. It is beveling time. So let's go ahead and lower down the opacity once more. Create a new layer. And we are about to move into one of my favorite things ever, and that is creating the second layer, the second bevel. How thick is your armor going to be? How thick do you like it? A very important question that everyone should ever, <laughs> that everyone should always ask themselves. Okay? <laughs> so let's go ahead and draw that bevel line. So the way that you're gonna be drawing bevel lines is you just wanna think about a second line that represents the thickness of your plates. Okay, and these can be as simple as things like this. You can draw in the bevel lines like this. And what this is going to do is it's going to begin creating the most amazing armor that you've ever seen because now this armor is going to have depth. It's going to have it's going to have like actual depth to the plates and it's going to look freaking awesome. If your art becomes freaking awesome after this, don't worry, it's it's normal. Normal. It's just bevels, bevels. So bevels also apply to the outer edges of things. You want to think about, oh, this metal comes out like that and then it dips back in. This metal comes out like that and then it's going to dip back in, okay? Boom, easy peasy, easy peasy. See how much more depth and feeling this has now? This has so much more feeling. It's looking great, looking fine, feeling good all the time. I think I'm going to change this up just a little bit more. Let's see if we can... I want to simplify this just ever so slightly. See, right there, bevel line. Bevel line right there. 
Easy peasy. Okay, bevel line right in there. See how that now shows the depth of this plate going in like that. Uh, we have a little bit of a challenge right here. We need to figure out what's happening with this uh, plate. Have it be like this. There we go. See how nice that feels? Oh, I love bevels. I love bevels. Bevels make me oh so happy. So please use them in your art all the time. Okay, cool. Cool. Now, here is a good example of where you might need more bevels. If you ever run into edges of the armor that just feel like they're flat, they're still paper thin, drop those bevels in there. Drop them bevels in there. And notice how there's areas where I make them thinner and then thicker. Subtle changes in these areas will also help to show the three dimensionality of your armor. Okay, I wanna make sure I'm getting these right. Is that proper? I'm kind of changing this up a tiny bit with uh, what Ornstein's armor looks like, but that's okay. I want this to be a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an homage armor. In fact, I kind of want to change this up. I noticed they did something in the concept art that I really liked. They took this entire piece that kind of covers the neck and they turned this into one giant piece. So it looks more like this. See how easy that is to change that up and see how much depth this still has. See how much depth this armor still has to it? Really love that. This is where concepting armor really takes the next turn. It takes the next turn and becomes much more interesting. So let's see, maybe we'll do something like this. And then that. Actually, I kind of like something more like that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then uh, also another thing, it doesn't technically have to do with bevels, but putting in little designs like uh, trim on your pieces oftentimes make things look way cooler as well. So you can drop in little pieces of trim. Don't worry too much about the design right now. Uh, what's more important is that you just want to get the get the noise in there, for lack of a better term. I like just to call it noise. That represents a trim that you can really design later. Okay, cool. Cool, so see how that armor piece now just has so much more interesting depth to it. Absolutely love it. Let's go ahead and move into the chest plate, uh, chest plate, chest piece. Okay, so it's gonna be very similar. Let's get that bevel right there. Here's a good example of where bevels will show their differences in depth. See how right here, it'll be very, very thin, but then right here, it'll go back to being thick. This is a great way for you to show the depth of your armor. See that? That is a perfect example. Glad I got that down. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move into these plates, these secondary plates. So this one comes up and goes like that. However, what is the depth of that plate? Well, show the bevel line. It's going to be really thick right there, but then it's going to disappear on this side. It's going to be very, very thin. Same with this plate. Let's go ahead and draw this one in. Let's have it be thick on the edge that's facing you. Here's a good example is that your bevel should always be thicker, right, on the planes that are facing you. And then as they turn away, they will start to disappear. Another really good way to think about bevels. So always be thinking about that stuff. Cool. Here comes the gorget. The gorget, aka the neck armor. Let's go ahead and draw that up. Draw that up, draw that in. Uh, I'm going to modify this a little bit from what we had before. There we go. And then that should mean that the neck is like right in there. Cool. See that? That's looking grand. It's looking grand. This is a good example. Another thing that really helps armor to look interesting is that, yeah, you've done the bevel, but then see how this armor just feels more interesting? Well, that's because there's like little, there's little moldings and little kind of imperfections that are happening along the edges, right? 
So it might be good for you to get in there and uh, draw in those little kind of imperfections. These could be even like little, these could be like burn marks. These could be scratches. It could be, it could be other things like the trim, like we were mentioning before. As soon as you start adding in little details like this, your armor again will take another turn for being more interesting. Another thing that I found that is good is keep your bevel lines a little bit thinner. Thinner bevel lines and thicker actual overlap lines tend to make your armor look more clear, okay? If your bevel lines are as thick as your, your actual like layered lines, then the design might start to be a little bit confusing. So take it easy with those bevels, okay? Take it easy with the bevels. Make the outer edges a little bit darker, a little bit more precise, okay? So you'll get something more like that, okay? See? Ah, very good. Very good. Next, let's go ahead and, well, speaking of that, let's go ahead and reinforce these lines that we had over here uh, using that principle. Cool. So yeah, let's keep those outer lines, the ones that are overlapping. Let's keep those nice and thick and dark. Very good. Very good. Let's move into the helm. I think the helm is going to be one of the more important pieces. So let's go ahead and nail that down. So the helm is going to be, I'm actually going to increase the size of this fanning effect because I want this entire, it wouldn't make sense for the character to turn their head and like expose their neck like that. So let's go ahead and just take this neck plating or the plate of the helm and let's fan it out a little bit more. Let's fan it out a little bit more so that way it has complete coverage. Okay, good, good. And then from there, let's go ahead and move ourselves up to the, the actual helm. And I'm just referencing this over here. Looks like well, one of the things that I really like about this helm is that it looks like the visor. It looks like this entire piece, like this piece that goes up towards the eye and even the lion's mask. This looks like that would be the swivel joint. Like if this helm was to open, the swivel joint would be right there. And then this entire piece right here, this is what would open. So let's go ahead and play around with that. I think that's a good call. Therefore, let's do it. So let's make sure that there's plenty of opening right here. And let's have a bevel line right there. Let's show that depth. Things as simple as that can show like a, a bevel line and show that there is like a layer of metal happening there. Let's go ahead and erase that away so that we get that nice clear bevel happening. And then this line can connect like that, and this line might connect like that. Cool. All right, moving on up towards the head. Moving on up towards the head, I really love the design of this helm. It's so beautifully done. Okay, so let's say that this line represents the middle. And then this line is going to go up towards our helm. And this, uh, the visor, as we said before, the place where Ornstein is actually going to look out is going to be the mouth of this creature which can be shown like this. Cool. I'm actually going to bring this back like that. And see how once you start connecting these lines, it starts to feel a lot more three-dimensional. This is another really important thing for you guys to get down. I want you to be able to create armor that feels like it's three-dimensional. Cool. Let's get that nose in there. Lovely nose. And let's draw in. Let's draw in this dragon lion head thingy. Very cool. Very cool. Now you've got all these platings that are going up like this. And again, always be asking yourself, what is the depth of this plate? How is it difference in how does it correspond to the rest of the armor? And as you do that, you will be you will begin creating things that look like they're three dimensional. See, look at those bevel lines that I'm throwing in there. Bevel lines, bevel lines, gotta love it. Okay, let's go ahead and move on up to the rest of this face. 
bevel that easy and then I imagine this entire thing here is what would actually move back cool love it that looks awesome there you go see now you have Ornstein's helm drawn in three dimensions and with added bevels for increased readability, it's feeling quite nice. Feeling quite nice, if I do say so myself. Okay, and now we know, now that we have dissected this helm, we know how this would actually move. We know how it would, would uh, pull back. If he was to open his helm, we know now that this entire piece, this entire bit is all one piece of metal that would come up and basically fall back to the back of his head. It'd be very interesting to see that happen. All righty, cool. Let's move on to the back of the arms. I don't want to get too carried away in this because I want to make sure that I'm doing different pieces of the armor. So maybe instead what we'll do is let's move down to the legs because I've already drawn one shoulder piece. I can finish up the rest of this later. Uh, but let's get that plume in there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get that plume in there. Ah! Uh! Love it. Cool. And even the plume has a semblance of flow to it. Very, very important that we get that down. Yeah, let's move on to the leg plates. Leg plates are very important. Uh, these tassets. Leg plates are very important. And uh, also, they're going to be a challenge to get those bevels on. How thick do we want these plates to be? And we're going to show that as simple as this, okay? You actually will draw the same shape that you had before. So draw this same shape and the same, uh, the same ellipse, right, to show that curving of the metal. But then do one of these. See that point right there? That's the bevel. It's going to come around like this. All of these pieces are facing toward us, right? But then see right here? They're not anymore. They're facing away from us, facing away. Okay, and then we can kind of draw in something like this. Cool. Let's continue that on this next piece. Where is the ellipse? Right there. Where is the outer edge of the armor? Right there. And where is the bevel? The bevel is going to be right there. And it turns away from us there. Uh, something that I would do here personally is that you want to make the arm, well, actually in this case, the armor should look like it's laying on top of each other, especially because the leg is pushed out. You want to stay away from this. Try not to draw the next plate coming out like this because like you have this open space here, but like why would there be open space there? Like it doesn't make sense. All these plates should be very close to one another because the leg is outstretching and it's going to be placing the plates. It does actually doesn't look too bad. <laughs> Maybe I do like that. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there would be a little bit of uh, overlap happening there. I think it just gives us a nice area of rest. Maybe I just disproved myself right here on the show. Yeah, and we're doing stylized armor, so what the heck? What the heck? Let's say, actually, to get this point across a little bit easier, mm, I don't know. See, this, this armor always gave me trouble because I try to imagine how those tassets being so long how your legs would always be running into them and if there would be a better way to design them um, and if there was maybe what i would do is maybe turn these turn these bottom tassets into being more connected with the rest of the leg however then you run into the problem of the knee because if you were to try to bend your knee with those plates see how they would all just run into each other so in that case Maybe we'll just kind of stick with what we got. Let's stick with what we got. So we'll have a nice small plate right there, a little bit of a bevel. Let's just go ahead and continue with what we have because we want these tassets to be able to kind of move out of the way if they have to. And this last one is huge. This is the biggest one. In fact, this one has a bit of an upward turn to it. Do you see that there? See how it turns upwards? So actually what we're going to be seeing here for the ellipse is the armor is gonna be going like this. 
going to be going upwards like this. And then the bevel is going to be like that. It's going to come in like that. Okay, and you can kind of mirror that a little bit. I've noticed that it helps to kind of mirror that same that same kind of motion to the rest of the pieces. Let's kind of lend a little bit of that upturnedness to them. So see what I'm doing here? This is what it really, this is what thinking in 3D really is all about, is you're saying, okay, we're adding this upturned element to all of the plates. So what part of the plate needs to change? Well, actually it's right here. It changes like that. And if that changes, then the bevel changes. The bevel changes like that. And where does this piece go? Well, it's gonna connect back like that. See, now we've created a different shape, but our ellipses are still the same, it still looks like it's happening in 3D, okay? So I highly recommend that all of you give that a go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, cool. Very, very cool. Uh, let's go ahead and draw in the leg armor. Let's draw in dat leg armor. Let's see, we've got a little bit of overlap that's happening here. So this is the knee armor that will overlap and go into our leg. It's gonna look something like that. Whoops, am I doing that right? Mm, ah, they go upwards. Actually, I'm gonna change this up just a little bit. So this is my interpretation of Ornstein. I'm gonna change this up a little bit. Let's have it go like this. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Cool. And then this leg, this foot, I need to change it just ever so slightly because remember how we were talking about the knee is like over here? We need that to be able to flow into a foot. So here's what I'm thinking in my head that uh, usually I just think this and I just kind of project it onto the canvas. But here how, here's how I'm actually going to draw that foot is I'm thinking about the heel. The heel needs to be somewhat in line with the knee. And if it's bending like this, it wouldn't make sense. See, our heel is down here currently. See how that feels weird to kind of like put your foot like that? I just don't think that that makes sense to me. The heel needs to be more over like here. It's actually going to be more uh, more overlapped by the foot. So we're actually going to get something more like this. Okay, and that's actually a really good, really good foot. Digging that. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, actually, to make that work. I like that foot so much. I'm just going to duplicate this and I am going to fill it with our sketch color. And then I'll just go ahead and erase this away. Again, still staying very, very rough. Very, very rough with my lines. And I hope that this shows you guys how much, like basically how rough my lines stay until the very, very end. Until the very, very end of my drawings. And actually, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to get clean line art especially in these early phases. So don't be afraid. Don't feel sad if your lines don't look perfect or if they look really sketchy like mine. In fact, know that that is completely normal. Similar to what we were doing, hey, look at that. See how I upturned that boot? See how I took that bevel? It's You could call it a bevel on the sabatons. And I said, okay, well, if we have this change in geometry happening there, where is that where is that going to resolve? You always want to think about like, where does that bend in the metal? Like if you bend it to a crease like that, it has to resolve somewhere. So draw that line as to where it goes. You draw the line. And then this part of the sabaton is going to come up like this. I imagine like that. And that will resolve further up inside of there. Cool. Isn't that great? We've got the chain mail piece that comes down like this. And let's draw in that, uh, what was it called again? The fold, the fold, which is these additional plates that come down like this. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a beautiful piece of armor that is coming into play. Coming over to play the new Dark Souls remaster, which I really hope is going to be good. I think it will be. Just the fact that I can play with my friends, so it'll be awesome. Just the fact that I can relive the good old days of the chain backstab. Cool. 
All right, yeah, I'm feeling pretty dang good about that. I wanna kind of wrap up this tutorial with, man, that actually looks really good. Very, very happy with how that turned out. Uh, but we can see that there's a little bit, there would we would need to see the leg a little bit more in there. So let's not forget about that leg. Kind of just draw those lines to indicate where those legs are happening. Okay, so don't forget that, don't forget that. The last thing that I would do for this to help to show the depth of this armor is I would create a new layer. Well, for the purposes of this, let's create a new layer. Let's set it to multiply. And let's get in there and start adding in some shadows. Shadows would also really help. Let's say that you are creating an armor piece, a stylized armor for your client. And you wanted to make sure that this came across really clearly. Start adding in shadows wherever there are overlaps. So see the overlap of Ornstein's helmet right there. Maybe a little bit of overlap on the Kutche. No, not Kutche. <laughs> I said the old the old way that I used to say cooter. The oh we still need to do the van braces and the gauntlets. We should do that as well as sketch in his spear really quickly. But regardless, we're getting sidetracked. Uh, shadows work really well in these areas. You can also add a little bit of shadow to areas like say here, like where the chest plate or the uh, chest armor kind of goes down, showing that depth there. Uh, oh, a lot of shadows right here. Shadows are going to look beautiful in all these overlapping pieces. All these overlapping pieces of armor. It's going to look really nice there. Maybe a shadow right in this area. A little shadow right there. And you can begin adding that depth back to your piece. And this will really help your armor to show clearly. It will help to show your bevels. It will help to show your depth. All the things that are very important to getting a design approved. <laughs> okay, so that is my best advice to you guys. Let's go ahead and color and let's tone that. Actually, I should be using the chalk brush for the tones. I like the little bit of additional texture that that adds. A little bit of additional texture. That feels nice. Feels nice, eh? There we go. And then just for back here, the information has all been shown in the front. I would just tone this entire back leg like this, just put it in shadow. Again, it's all about clarity. It's like you've already shown the detail, you've shown what's happening in these armor pieces up front. You don't need to show it in the back necessarily, unless you really, really want to. Cool. Uh, let's do. The gauntlets, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's do some gauntlets. Man, I'm really, really proud of this. I'm really, really proud of this because arguably, okay, I always feel bad for artists whenever they try to do armor design tutorials because they're really, really hard to do because everything that I've explained to you today, bevels, thinking in 3D, overlaps, all those things you have to come up with a way to say all in one. And then on top of that, well, I, I'm speaking for all artists. Artists may have other like other artists may have gotten this down, and I'm saying kudos to them, especially because it's so hard. But the other problem that I've had previously to this, and something that I was able to fix in this iteration, is that we had an armor set that was already designed. All of those problems that I just described to you now tack on the fact that we need to design a new armor piece. And then I need to get into, you know, what is a motif? What is a design? What is, you know, small, medium, large? And how does that correlate? And basically create something on the fly. And then on top of that, have it make sense. But since we have a beautifully designed Ornstein armor to go off of, that made everything a million times easier. And we like that. So thank you, Ornstein. Thank you, Smo, best friend. And uh, yeah, maybe we can <laughs> draw some Smo later. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I do like Smo's armor too. Smo's armor is the like the ultimate like crazy crazy design. Like it doesn't get much crazier than Smo's armor. Okay, but let's go ahead and finish these out. Okay, so we have that there. Let's draw on the gloves and the spear of Ornstein. The Spear of Ornstein. I'm just going to draw it very, very quickly because I will fix this up later. I'll make it look good. I'll probably post this onto, onto Instagram later for you guys. 
Really happy with how this turned out. And I hope that you guys got some good value out of this today. Thank you everyone who stuck around. Thank you for drawing with me, those of you who drew with me along with me today, hopefully some Dark Souls stuff. I would love to see your armor designs, whether they are from Dark Souls or made up by you on the Instagram, on the lovely lane after this. And hopefully me teaching you about bevels and about thinking of things in 3D space has been very helpful today. I know it's been helpful for me. I love doing these tutorials because I need to reteach myself oftentimes. I need to reteach myself all the time, all the time I need to reteach myself. So getting this, having a chance to explain it and teach it to you guys has been, as always, a pleasure. And thank you for sticking around today. Alrighty then. Alrighty then, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, really happy with that. Uh, the last thing I want to do, since we've got that handy, since we've got that handy uh, multiply layer on there, I wonder if a little bit of gold would look good on there, since he's all one color. Might be easy to just throw that in there. The color of gold in old paintings. And while I do this, maybe a bit of a story is in order. <laughs> yeah, sure. For those of you who stuck around till now, let me catch you up on what's been going on in my life. I'm really happy with how the game has been turning out. For those of you who don't know, I'm working on a game called Icons. I'm working with a company called Wave Dash. It's a platform fighter similar to Super Smash Brothers. We're going into open beta in July. Right now we're in closed beta, and I'm really happy with how it's been turning out. Uh, but yeah, things at work have been a little bit hectic, so I thank you, to, thank you to everyone who has been patient with me, allowing me to have a little bit more time off between these episodes and uh, know that it does not go unnoticed. I really appreciate you guys for being so awesome. And I'm really happy, like every time I get on the lovely lane, we're about to go to the lovely lane, but I just love seeing how much you guys improve every single week. And I hope that you guys will continue to improve. Oh, here's another really cool thing. Whenever you are toning things, whenever you're toning up your armor, uh, just think about in terms of negative space, wherever there is negative space on your painting, uh, that will automatically become a highlight. It'll automatically become a highlight. So you can just kind of erase away here, erase away there. And see how that automatically makes makes things look really shiny? Really awesome. Another cool way to save time and make your art look great. Make it look grand, beautiful. Let's put in a little bit of hue shifting in there. I want it to kind of go towards this yellow in the brighter spots. This is basically what I would be doing as I was fixing it up for Instagram. Another thing that's gonna make this look really nice is uh, changing that multiply layer or multiply layer. Let's turn that to a dark, or let's turn it to a, a little bit more of a red. Let's see if that gives us a little bit more. Ooh, that's way too, that's way too much. Something more like that would look nice and darken it, saturate. There we go, that looks great. Digging that. Awesome, let's put in some red on that beautiful plume. But uh, yeah, I'm always thinking about negative space whenever I shade things. It really comes in handy whenever I'm doing hair. I always like to leave that negative shine space on the hair. I also do it on armor all the time. All the time. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna leave this nice and bright back here, a little bit less toned. Uh, but see, you can kind of like erase it and give them a little bit of an anime shine there if it so suits your needs. If it so suits your needs, I want to have a little bit of kind of, uh, maybe not that color. It just needs to be desaturated. I want a little bit of purple in there. Yeah, that looks cool. That looks really, really cool. Yeah, I'm probably gonna finish toning this up and I will put it on Instagram for you guys to take a look at. But as I was saying before, I'm really happy to see you guys improving. It's really cool to see the stuff that I teach you guys being put into practice on the lovely lane. And just know that I do see it, super proud of you guys. And the world does need more good concept artists. We've got plenty of okay concept artists. We've got plenty of artists that kind of get it, but they kind of gave up halfway through. But we need more artists that push through. We need more artists that, that get this stuff. And uh, the reason why I'm teaching this today, specifically on armor, is because I struggled with it for so long. And when I actually figured out what I had to do, it was one of those moments where I was like, 
it was so simple. The, the answer was always there. It's just nobody told me. So hopefully, me telling you today gives you some newly found confidence to get out there and continue the journey and know that I will be with you every step of the way. At least until my days on this earth come to the end, but I still got plenty. Still got plenty. So let's go ahead and have ourselves some fun. Let's have ourselves some fun studying art. Let's get to work. All right. Cool. Color in the lines. Add a little bit of life in there. Ah! Uh, there's our Ornstein armor, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I'm so happy with that. I'm so proud of that. All right. Yeah. Oh, and of course, yes. If you want to download this, if you want to download and check out all these layers for yourself, this is going to be on the Patreon. I will do a little bit more of additional touch-ups before I put it up on there, though. Probably just add in a little bit more overpaints. So there will be some hidden layers, some secret layers also available there for download, as well as all of the other PSDs. Let's not forget the hundreds of other PSDs that have ever been featured on the show. Thank you guys so much for supporting the show, as always. I'm going to leave you with some lovely lane, as well as some new music. Let's pull up some music. This is coming in from NCS, No Copyright Sounds. I love their music so much. Really cool electronic stuff. If you want to check out their music, I will be linking them in the description as well. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. And until then, enjoy some Dark Souls. Enjoy some Ornstein. And I'll see you soon. Take care. See, this is what I'm talking about. This is such cool stuff. All these cute girls. I love it. I love the Bob Ross. That's really great. Yeah, you guys are getting good. You guys are getting great at drawing these sexy ladies. It's a skill that is hard to come by. Highly sought after. Keep it up. Look at those bodies. Wow, great work. Great work on those studies. Very, very important to get those done. Like <laughs> the Chewbacca solo mermaid. Oh my god. I totally, like, I was looking through this stuff and I said to myself, I can't believe it's mermaid again. I, it feels like it wasn't that long ago. It was like last year. I, I totally forgot it was May until I saw the mermaid pictures. It's like, oh yeah, it's Mermaid. Oh, it's Mermaid again? Crazy. A cool shadow. Very cool shadow. Oh, that Timo honey. That's so cute. Or is that Timo? Oh, no. It's got Timo eyes. <laughs> Mayo man. I like that. It's cool. You guys make me so proud. I am proud to call myself your teacher. Keep it up, keep it up. We're nearly done here. Nearly done. I wanna see your art on here. I know there's a lot of you that are lurkers. Lurkers that haven't sent your artwork in. You can get featured. I wanna see it. I wanna see it. 
Alrighty, everybody. Take care. Take care.